Let me get I think my some people are joining. Yeah. Let's Welcome see. everyone for joining. <clears throat> All right. Let's Welcome see. to the Growing My Life podcast. Are you still getting ready? There we go. Hey. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining the Growing My Life podcast. Today I have Taylor from the Kate Canvas Studio. She had me on her podcast, which was amazing. That was my first time being on a yes. podcast, doing anything like that, opening up myself in that way. But um, I was already doing my podcast, but it's different when you're like live like this, you know? So I appreciate that for giving me that opportunity to speak with you and everything. Um, but now I get to interview you and get to know you more and learn from you and all of that. And that's why I wanted to start this space was to connect with women like you, you know, out there making bold choices and, you know, putting yourself out there. It's not easy at all. Um, just Absolutely. like you were saying in your stories today, you know, you you've been like in a funk lately, you know, so it's like getting back to that and all of that. So this is what this is all about and just being accountable and especially in my life and other women's lives and inspiring them and encouraging them and celebrating each other and all of that. So anyways, I'll let you introduce yourself and okay. who you are, your nationality, where you're from, like what you're doing, all of that. <laughs> okay. So I'm Taylor Turner, and I am the owner and cake designer of the Cake Canvas Studio. I live in Lakewood, California, so I'm like mm, 30 minutes from downtown LA, and cool. um, I'm black. <laughs> yes. I'm just black. I'm not that I know of. I'm not mixed with anything, so I am one. You are gorgeous. <laughs> I'm 100% African American. Yes, that's what it is. You know, mm -hmm. representing. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I have had the K Chemist Studio. K Chemist Studio started off as Divine Sweets. Oh, I don't know. And that. yeah, and I rebranded to. Two like maybe a year and a half ago, I rebranded oh, recently. To the K Chemist Studio. Yes, so I've had this business. It'll be seven years in October. Congratulations! So, thank you. So I have been in business for a while. Um, hundred percent self taught. I don't have any formal education. I tell everybody I went mm -hmm. to YouTube University, mm -hmm. and that's that's what it was. Yeah, um, me I too. <laughs> I took a few classes and, you know, with bakers that, you know, offered courses and that was pretty much it, but no formal education, just something I was like, uh, I need some money and I need to try mm -hmm. my way at a few different things. And this stuck, this hit and we rocking with it. Yes. And that's what I love about cake decorating that is timeless. Like anybody yep. can really pick it up and do it. And it's, like you can teach your family how to how to cake right. decorate. You can get just get together and do it together. Like yep. it's just, it's like a barbecue. Like you know what I mean. But like yep. with cake, almost you know. So you kind of have that same feeling of like family and mm -hmm. all of that. So, but okay, that's awesome. Thank you for that. And so now I want to talk about like the moment that changed you. So what made you? like get into cake decorating in the first place? And then how did you like transform into what you are now? Cause you have a few things that you do. Like yes. you're like a professional woman, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm a you professional have... multitasker. Okay. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you do is like beautiful, you know, t with taste, with class, you know, all of that. So yeah, let's Thank dive into you. that. <laughs> yes. So the question was, what changed What changed me? The moment that changed you. The moment yeah. that changed me. Okay. So we'll let's rewind. Let's go back to like 10, 10 years old. Like, let's just. 10 years old. So yeah. We're going to take it back. Um, so at 10 years old, at that age, um, was when I really started, probably a little later, maybe 11. We'll just say 10. Mm -hmm. But at that age, was when I was old enough to understand a lot of things. I was mm -hmm. not as naive. Um, I kind of was able to really like 
pick up on things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at that age, you know, I, my mom has always been a great mom. We never struggled. We didn't, we, you know, no utilities were cut off. We were not living in poverty by any means. That's However, good. she was a single parent of yeah. three kids. Um, she was trying her best to like do what she could for mm -hmm. us, but it's still, I could still see the struggle. Yeah, and even yeah. though it was like life stayed on, things stayed on. It's like, nah, but mom, you're working nights. Yes, yeah, she you was got off. Things. Yeah, you just got off work, and now you're going back to work. Mm -hmm. Like I could see that, and since I was a child, I've always been very empathetic. <clears throat> so I've always just been like, no, like I used to tell my mom, like I just want to cure the world. Like I just want to like I don't want people to be sad. Like I want to mm -hmm. have a solution to every problem. Like if you're sad or this is happening, okay, so let's just do this. Like, mm -hmm, that's how mm -hmm. I've always been. And I've always Aww. just, like, had a really big heart for, like, not seeing my people hurting. So it's, like, at that age, I was able to really feel my mom's struggle, mm -hmm. even though she would try, try to do her best to, like, hide it from us. But yeah. I was always really tapped in. Like, mm, no, I feel like she's bothered right now. I feel like she's sad right now. Um, and yeah. in addition to that... You know, I, a lot of people in my family have been addicted to drugs. And I've seen it, like, never have actually seen anybody doing drugs, but I've seen the outcome of it. I've seen yeah. the consequences <laughs> of doing drugs. Those two things made me be like, nah, like, that's never going to be for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to help rewrite that story for my family. Like, yeah. I want us to like all the generations to come. That's not in our that's that's not in our blood. That's not us. We're not doing that. No struggle, no drugs, none of that. You know, and struggle is different for everyone. You know, some people's mm -hmm. struggle is no electricity, no hot water, things like that. Mm -hmm. My struggle was just different. I struggled seeing my mom struggle. Mm -hmm. And so that mm -hmm. was the moment that changed me. That essentially was like, Wow. Yeah, I don't want I don't want you to struggle. Like, I, I feel like there's a, we can find a way out of this. Like, we don't have to be in debt. We don't have to, to mm. work two jobs. And, you know, seeing my mom work during the holidays at Macy's and stuff was like, oh, that's cool. But, like, no, mom, you're supposed to be at home. Like That is time. true. Yeah. Like, my mom worked two jobs, too, so at one point. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't want us to struggle. And I think it just, no. So those moments. Mm -hmm. and those all happen at different phases of my life. Um, but starting from the age of 10, it was like, no, like, I just always knew, like, that's not going to be the life that we live. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care how long it takes me, we're not going to live that yeah. life. Yeah, you're like, going to change that. Life. Yeah, absolutely. So then moving forward, what was the like, the first thing that you ended up doing for yourself to like kind of prove like okay this this is going to work I'm going to yeah. I'm going to change our lives like in a way yeah so the first thing was I wanted to take the burden off of my mom like mm -hmm. when it came to school shopping or anything additional that I mm -hmm. felt that I needed so mm -hmm. she there would be some time she's like look I can't afford to take you school shopping that's just what it is or yeah. I can only afford to buy you this much mm -hmm. like I just I understand mm -hmm. you've got to figure it out so I was like okay i'm gonna figure it out so i would recycle bottles and cans like i would just wow. save them up and that was like i think the most i ever got was like 20 dollars. but i was super happy wow. about that 20 dollars. yeah that's a lot, that's a lot. <laughs> so i saved up bottles and cans i would try to find things around the house that we could resell on ebay and i used mm -hmm. to beg my mom like like yes let's post this on ebay if we sell it for this much then we we can or if we post it for this much then we'll profit this much and then we could use that towards this Ooh, like yeah and it's like i wanted a new phone so i'm like well my mom's not gonna buy me a new phone and so no one else is gonna buy it for me i was too young didn't couldn't get a job because you need i think you had to be 15 or something you need yeah. a work permit so mm -hmm. I was like I could not wait to turn 15 so I could get a job because I was like hustling so wow one day I, my mom took me to um buy candy she was like well I'll invest in your first box of candy you can cool. sell that at school mm -hmm. 
I'm like, okay. So I did it. She kind of walked me through like what a profit is, what a loss was, what, you know, how to calculate what your actual revenue was. Cause I'm like, oh, so if I sell 30 candy bars, that's $30. Oh, I got money. Like I felt mm -hmm. like it was something, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, but you have to reinvest. You know, I'm only going to buy your first box and you have to take mm -hmm. this money and then you have to reinvest it. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I was doing that and I turned into the candy girl at school and everybody was like, oh yeah, what you got today? I had the good candy, okay? Like the good candy. Yes. We used to go to Costco <laughs> and get the good ones. So I was like, okay, cool. So I made, this is how much I made this week. And I used to tell my mom, mom, I need more candy. Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. running low on candy. I have my money to buy another box of candy and I'll put my profits up. And so I did that for a while, and then finally I was able to get a job. So yeah. freaking excited. And my first job was I was a sign troller. So I was the people, and I'm sure you, I don't know. I wonder if they have them in Florida. I'm sure they do. A sign but, troller? Yeah, the people that stand <laughs> on the corner with the, with oh, the sign. Yeah. So I was a sign troller, and oh, yeah. I, was, uh, I did it for, like, a new home development to, like, mm -hmm. promote the new homes. So I was out there Saturday, Sunday from 10 to 5 every weekend. And they, they were paying pretty well at that time. It was like $10 an hour. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is great. I finally can, like, have my own money. And that, all of those things put together was, like, I knew that, like, I had it in me to really do something. Like, I just mm -hmm. always had that drive. Mm -hmm. So... I would, even as a child, I would beg my mom, mom, take me to Barnes & Noble. I want to get books on how to make money as a teenager because I don't have a work permit and I That's can't work. It was just wow. like, I was just, it was, it was a, the thought would never leave my mind. Like, I always knew I will be successful in mm -hmm. what success means for me. Success for everyone is different. But yeah. success for me was I don't want us to struggle. Like, I don't want money. I'm so tired of money being yeah. the reason why we can't do this or that. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to go here, I can't because I can't afford to. Or mm -hmm. I can't do this. Like, I was just like, I'm tired of living like that. And I'm just, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm tired of seeing you live like that. Yeah. So that was like really my motivator. And those are all things that I did that led up to, you know, what I do now. And I, I don't, I can say like, I'm not where I want to be, but mm -hmm. I'm just very grateful that I feel like I am successful right now. I might not have yeah. dollars. I might not be able to retire my mom, but I'm successful in the sense of I could have became a drug addict. Mm -hmm. I could have, you know, had those bad, sad, depressed days and stayed down, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I kept going, you know, I've had businesses that have failed. I've had ideas mm -hmm. that have failed. I have, mm -hmm. I'm in debt, you know, like all those things. But I'm like, I'm still going to keep going because I know mm -hmm. that I'm just, I'm getting closer. Like, I right. know. You have that feeling like, yes. oh, like that's no, how I feel I'm too. Like there. something's going to happen. I'm, 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 I'm about to crack the code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. For real, for real. So you kind of talked about like your journey and and your, your your background with your mom and how is your mom now like how how is her life now? Oh now yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean she's good. We're still kind of like putting our plans together. Yeah. Like you know we she wants to retire. I would love to retire mm -hmm. <laughs> right now too. So it's like yeah that's no she, yeah no mm -hmm. she's great and that's still you know still my goal to like help her to be able to retire and not have to worry about money. That's beautiful. I love that. So, um, yeah, so from after that, so you, at high school, you had your job twirling signs. So mm -hmm. then from there, did you, after that, did you go to college? Did you, yeah. um, so how, like, how was that? Like, what brought on to you today from all of those experiences? So I was a sign troller. Then in my senior year of high school, I got a job at an electricity company, Southern California Edison. And it, the requirements for me to work the job was that I would only go to school from like eight to noon and I would work from two to five. So I pretty okay. much like my senior year wasn't like the fun senior mm -hmm. year hanging out at school and stuff with people. I really was working 
So mm -hmm. it was a great job. Um, it was an internship. And after that internship, I went to Cal State Dominguez Hills in Carson. So I went there because I was like, you know what? I want to be an occupational therapist. Like, I want to be an occupational therapist. Um, I experienced the loss of my grandfather on my mom's side. And that experience showed me like, wow, like I was introduced to what occupational therapists do. And I, I've always wanted to do something in the medical field that didn't require a lot of school. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this might be it. And I kind of <laughs> like, like, you know, the process and just like the work that they did. I'm like, okay, you don't have to deal with medicine and chemistry and all that. Like, I like this. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be an occupational therapist. Went to school and um, I left. I actually moved. Cal State Dominguez Hills was like an hour or like, yeah, about an hour from where I grew up at. Okay. So I moved. I lived on campus. College mm -hmm. was great. It was a wonderful mm -hmm. experience. I wouldn't trade that experience for the world, but I can tell you I probably would return my degree if I could. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, Biden not doing what he's supposed to be doing with these student loans. Yeah, but, yeah. It, <laughs> you know, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But I definitely, I loved and enjoyed the experience, but it ended up showing me that I didn't really want to do occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. After occupational therapy, I graduated, or I was close to graduating. And um, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around. I have so many jobs. I started my that. first job when I went to college was at Burlington Coke Factory. Started there um, making like $12 an hour or something wow. like that. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm in school, have a job, and like mm -hmm. on my own. Like, Bills are mine, car is mine, all this, all these things. So worked at Burlington for like eight years. And wow. they wanted me to be like manager. Like yeah. I ended up being a supervisor. They wanted me to like stay and do a management program. And I'm like, uh no, this is it's not for me. I'm not that connected to it. I'm good at it. I'm not that connected to it. Yeah. Something kept telling me, like, no, find a business that you want to run. Find your own mm -hmm. lane. Like find mm -hmm. something. So I tried mm -hmm. to open a cleaning business that didn't work because once I like really was thinking about it and I had business cards, I was on Yelp, I had pricing plans, we, you know, mapped out and I was going to have my first client. I was like, you know what, let me test it on my, on my own apartment and let me see yeah. like how I feel about cleaning. I didn't like it. So I yeah. scratched that. That's hard day. work. Cleaning. That's hard work. And I said, I can imagine if I'm sweating like this in my own place, I'm really going to be yeah. clean somebody else's mm -hmm. house. So I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. So I dropped that. And then I was like, you know what? Let me do, I was really into like finances and credit. I was like, let me do like a financial consulting company or something yeah. like that. Help people with their budgets mm -hmm. and things like that. So I started that and then... That didn't, it, I think if I would have stuck with it, it may have taken off. But I think internally I was a little conflicted because I was in debt. So it was like, how am I helping you budget? <laughs> and I know all these right. things, but it's like now I wish I knew what I knew before I was in credit card debt. And yeah. it's like, how am I going to tell you how to do it? And you're going to be like, well, you don't even have a success story. You don't even have receipts. Like. I don't believe yeah, so you. it was a conflict mm -hmm. of interest there. So I kind of just dropped that, but still always had like a passion for helping people understand it. Mm -hmm. So then I found baking and I found baking and yeah, I found baking first and I just made like a cupcake recipe and yeah. I took it to work and they were like, oh, these are so good. Like you should sell these. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Should I? They was like, yeah. I'm like, cool. $20 a dozen. Like, <laughs> let's sell them. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, money, money, money. Not, not thinking about anything else. No, the yeah. cost of supplies, anything. So I just right. got, like, literally obsessed and laser focused on baking. I was like, oh, I should do this. I should do that. I just should do this. And it was taken off. And so from mm -hmm. there, people were like, you should do cakes. I'm like, no. I'm never going to do cakes. Mm -hmm. Those are too difficult. Absolutely not. And they were like, no, do a cake. So I did a cake for someone. I said, oh, I kind of like this. Mm -hmm. So I started doing cakes. And then 
it just kept rolling and I started doing cookies and I was doing cake pops and I was doing everything. Yeah, you doing everything, yeah. It all crashed mm -hmm. <laughs> because it was just like, I can't do it all, don't even like doing all of this. Then I started mm -hmm. really like, no, I'm taking it serious. And at one point I was like, I don't know, maybe I'm tired of baking. So I got into real estate. And oh, so I yeah. got into real estate, did real estate and baking and working for about a year and had to let real estate go because it wasn't taking off quick enough and it was costing mm -hmm. me more than I was yeah. generating. So it was like, that's something you have to kind of do full time. I didn't have the yeah, time yeah. to get to it. Mm -hmm. so I said, okay, let me get back into baking, but let me customize my offerings so that yes. I'm not burnt out. I'm mm -hmm. not staying up for 24 hours. Let mm -hmm. me do that. So I dived into that and said, you know what? We're only doing cakes. Like, we're only doing cakes. We might do cupcakes. So for a while, I was rolling mm -hmm. with that. And then I rebranded. And that's when everything just, uh, just changed for me. Like, everything changed for my business. It was just, it was a breath of fresh air. It was like, finally, I'm at a point where I can just tell people no. I don't make that, yeah. I don't make that mm -hmm. and I don't feel shamed about it. I don't mm -hmm. feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. I'm owning what I'm good at and I'm walking yeah. in that and I understand I don't have to be everything just because you're coming to me for it. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with referring you to somebody else. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty much long story, like how I got to where I am today. Wow. Okay. So you, you've been through a lot of different things. And I love that because you have to yeah. just, and like with you, you didn't care. Like you were just like, yep, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. <laughs> I'm going to see how it goes. And most people, they either won't do anything at all mm -hmm. or, you know, they just are doing the one thing, but they're not really seeking help or anything. Yep. So they're kind of stuck, right? A lot of us get stuck in the same like trying to figure it out stage, you yep. know, instead of like, you know, really taking the risk and putting yourself out there. Cause that's where it is. That's where you learn is actually doing the things that you, that you need to do. So I love that about you, that you like from a very young age, you realize what your mom was going through and you were like, Whoa, I'm going to become a woman one day. And I don't want to, I don't want to do this, I don't wanna you do know? Mm -mm. And so you took it upon yourself to learn. And luckily your mom told you when you make your money, you reinvest it back, mm -hmm. you reinvest it back, you reinvest it back. And then like, usually a parent is just like, just save it, just yeah. save it or just, you know, or get whatever, like, you know, and not telling you like really what's important when it comes to your money. And when you're trying to have a business, is to reinvest it back into your business. So that's amazing. And that you actually like finance, you like budgeting, yeah. you like doing all that, which is like the number one thing you need for as a baker, as a cake designer, yes, absolutely. is to know all of those skills. Yep. So you were able to still use your skill with your own business and you were able to really thrive and get it going because you already knew all the numbers, whatever had to be. Right. You know what I mean? Probably not at first, right? Because right. You, because you were excited, but afterwards you're like, all right, I gotta do it yeah. like this. You know? And it was like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to branch out and do this. Like, I have to be making some money. To yeah, do you this. have to be making some you money. Know? Yeah, that's a big thing for a lot of us bakers and cake decorators. Is, Absolutely, is pricing. Like, you love doing it, but you really have to charge. And I realized when you charge what you're supposed to charge, the kind, the quality of customers you get changes. Absolutely. And that's, that's what you want. Yeah, the quality of the food, the quality of what, what you're doing is great, but you want quality customers that respect you and you respect them too. Yep, and I think you know? it's important. A lot of new bakers, they are not patient. Like, I don't, I don't believe you, you necessarily have to struggle or you necessarily have no. to mm -hmm. like unsu extremely undercharge your product or your worth in order to learn these lessons however it's not something that happens overnight you know like mm -hmm. I wasn't I didn't command my worth until I felt and knew yeah. what I was worthy of. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can take these classes and, you know, this person can teach you these techniques. That is great. That is wonderful. But you do have to move 
in the area that you're in. You mm -hmm. can't just start charging certain prices, but you're not providing that right. value. So there's mm -hmm. all, that's also a conversation of what is the value that you are providing. So mm -hmm. once you know what you're providing, you know what you're what you're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. Then whoever you don't care who sits on the other side, yeah. you mm -hmm. know whoever sits across from you is going to be somebody who also values and understands right. what mm -hmm. your value add is, and that it's not just the cake. You know, mm -hmm. they, they understand and they they choose they're choosing to work with you. Right, exactly, and it's and it's also better to do one cake than five messed up cakes you know what right. i mean like don't overdo yourself and then everything's a hot mess Absolutely. You know i mean you do your one or two cakes whatever whatever you can handle that's what you do if, if you want to do cakes or if you want to do cupcakes or whatever yep. whatever you choose you know you have you know kind of how much you can handle and then however much you can handle will be the value that you put out yeah you know? exactly so, <clears throat> So yeah, I love that too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so now we can kind of talk about, so I want to dig a little deeper and just talk about um, what is something that's a non-negotiable for you when it comes to your life or your business or, I kind of like talking about like with business, I guess life, because it's all kind of together, because that's how <laughs> I feel. I feel like having my cake and, and then like my life and like my podcast wearing my light, like it's all my life. It's just different things, different components of it, but it's still, I'm still human. I'm still me. I'm still trying to do these things. So there's certain things that you have to do to be like, no, I, I can't do this today. I'm not doing this. I'm not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What is something like that for you and your like life as a whole, I guess. Um, so I would say, big picture something that is non-negotiable is me being successful like yeah yeah that's non-negotiable like that's it's not an option it's not not mm -hmm. going to happen mm -hmm. like that has to happen and again like i mentioned earlier it looks different for everyone but my definition of success it it, it that's non-negotiable now mm -hmm. god may have another mm -hmm. you know he may take it may take longer for me to get there. He may have another role for me to take or things I have to experience or go through. But I know just me being who I am, like that is non-negotiable. Like yes. I will live a life free from financial stress. Mm -hmm. And to taking that a little deeper, like just people of color, like people in general, but I'm really just going to, you know, zone in on people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we come from. Like, yeah. that's kind of like, we almost feel like when we are not stressed about money or money is not a stressor or a conversation in the home that something's wrong. Something's mm -hmm. going to happen. So something's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Let me save this money because yeah. I'm not something, I know my car going to start tripping. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. We are so used to just not, I don't want to say not having anything, but we're so used to not having a surplus of money. And right. I don't want people to get it twisted. I'm not money hungry, but we're keeping it real. Like, you you need money. Like, you need money, you have, girl. Yeah. Money doesn't buy happiness. I don't know anybody who is dirt poor that is just happy. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. It's just security. Happy. It's about the security. It's, the security. it's not about security. happiness. It's just about being like having. I'm I happy. just want to have it. <laughs> yes, I'm happy. I'm blessed. Like I'm yeah, we're blessed to be where yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. However, I still I want to get to a point where it's like I can help my family member. Yes. I can help change other people's lives mm -hmm. because yeah, about. you need money for a lot of things to make. Yeah, you you need money to help people. Really, you need money at the end of the day. People. Mm -hmm. So it's like the impact, yeah. The impact that I want to make for myself, my family, and other people in the community. I need, I need money to do that. I need income to do that. So I know for me, it's like my version of success is not to have to have my kids or myself, mm -hmm. my family have to be concerned with when are we getting paid again? Mm -hmm. or can we afford to do this? You know, because to, for me to live the life that I want to live, which is free from worries and stress. Mm -hmm. And to be able to say like, you know what, I, I'm a big experience person. So I love experience. Mm -hmm. 
So mm. I'll be like, I'll go to Florida. Like, yes, we're going to South yeah. Beach. We're going to have an experience. Like, look, mm -hmm. we're doing it all because you only live once. Like, I am huge on that. So mm -hmm. it's like, I can't wait to see what experience I can have when I don't have to say, yeah, but I got these bills to pay back at mm -hmm. home. So I only have like $100 for you. Like, yeah. I want to see what my life can be like. And for me, that is, that's like pure happiness. For me. Yeah, like to be able to make the choices, financial freedom, and the freedom to do what I want. That is mm -hmm. non negotiable for me. I don't know when it's gonna happen, yes. but just yeah. remember that I said it here first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, <laughs> it will happen. It will happen. Um, I feel that. Yeah, the real. second thing I think that's non negotiable, just on a, a smaller scale, is mm, I guess it's still related like my goals. Like my goals are non negotiable, mm. and the time that I dedicate to those goals like there's not too many things that can take me away from working on my goals every day mm -hmm. from spending 30 minutes to an hour just zoning in on this one project mm -hmm. because I always say like we one thing we don't get back is time like you don't yeah. get time back and I look back at my 20 year old self and I was just telling my mom this like sometimes I wish I would have traded the night's going out and the nights just hanging out and mm -hmm. just partying for the nights of like studying like my life would be so much different right now and I'm still mm -hmm. blessed don't get me wrong but I can't get that time back mm -hmm. and that that's what we don't have enough of so mm -hmm. I it's non-negotiable for me to do something one to two things for max of an hour every Good day advice yeah towards mm -hmm. my goal like, mm -hmm. if I want that, it's not going to fall out the sky. Mm -hmm. it, that's just not what it is. And so I have to work for it. I have to do the research mm -hmm. towards it. Like, anything you see me produce has been well thought out. Like, yeah. it has yeah. been like, oh, mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to sit on this. I'll sit on something for two weeks just to make mm -hmm. sure that I have it together before I put it out there. Mm -hmm. and yeah, because you want to be comfortable with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to be comfortable. I want to be secure. I want to pray on it. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that this is aligned with what I truly want to do because I'm no longer in the season of like, oh, I'm doing this because it's a fad or I'm doing this because other people are doing this. Or, I'm doing this just for the money. Like, mm -hmm. no, like I want to, I want the money that we all want the money, but I also want like, okay, what, what am I, what value am I giving to other people by mm -hmm. doing this as well, especially for this community, because mm -hmm. there's so many of us doing a lot of the same things. You have to kind of figure out how are you going to be mm -hmm. the diamond? How are you going to stand out from everyone mm -hmm. else? So exactly. just, mm -hmm. just taking, yeah, taking the time to make sure that I'm working on my business in some capacity every day. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing with the, the whole trending thing is what I would be irritated about with social media because mm -hmm. I'm not the trend. I don't, I just want to do what I want to do. Right. You know, but still fall in the lines of the thing of what your, of what, of what your niche is or whatever, yep. but still not feel pressured to do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that I unfollow because I kind of feel pressure. If, like if I'm watching them, if I don't, I'm not inspired by them and I'm watching them and what they're doing, but I feel like, oh, I have to do what they're doing. You get that like pull, like I gotta do what they're doing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Stay doing what you you're doing. To. Yep. And if I feel that pull, I'm like, I can't, I can't follow you no more. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, yeah. like, you Absolutely. know, because like even like big, like cake decorating accounts, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're so good at what they mm -hmm. do and they have all these followers and all this engagement and they're just so good. And it makes you want to make your content like that. Yes. Right. Like almost like a commercial, but it's like, they have it so nice and perfect, yep. but that's not real. Like, I mean, it, it is real for them, but not for me, not in my mm -hmm. life, in my situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I had to realize like, I have to do things the way my life is set up. Not the right. way they life set up, your life set up, or whoever's life set up. I'm going to do yeah. it the way I can and, I'm, and that I'm able to do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Trends, okay. whatever. I'm going to do what I do. <laughs> no, that's real. Every, look, you know. everybody don't have to be on Instagram dancing. Like, that's no, not for yeah. everybody. You mm -hmm. know, so you do what, you know, like you said, along the lines of what 
Instagram is promoting, yeah. but yeah. you don't have to get out of your comfort zone and like, yeah. oh, I just, I don't dance. I don't do that. Like, if that's not for you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's a way for you to do stuff, to mm -hmm. show your personality, right? Without having to do what everybody else is doing. Yep. And yep. you have people who are just like you. They might not dance. They want, they're, they might just be like, okay, like, that's not really mm -hmm. for us. They're going to navigate, navigate to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So the next thing is, so what bold changes did you have to make to do these things and transition yourself throughout all this, all these things that you've done? Um, you know, because like I said, it's hard to fail and then show up again because people mm -hmm. are going to be like, oh, that girl, she come up with another idea. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, yes. So, or people talk about you or whatever, mm -hmm. like, so yep. what bold things did you have to do for yourself to kind of get you out there? Um, getting out of my own way. Yeah. That's that a big one. Probably number one. I'm still, I still do it to this day. Um, mm -hmm. I'm my biggest critic. I'm my worst critic. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, mm -hmm. imposter syndrome is real. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I need like, affirmations that affirm that mm -hmm. I am like who people really think mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that's not really who I am. No, I'm not that. And then I have to check myself or I have to remember, you know, certain situations. And so that I think has been the hardest, most difficult thing for me to overcome. And I'm still in it trying to get past it um but some days i wake up i'm like you know what mm -hmm. you the shit mm -hmm. and some days i wake up and i'm like girl you know you need to self-evaluate like, <laughs> yeah you no know, and i'm really big on self-evaluation and sometimes i think it is detrimental to me because sometimes i instead of me evaluating somebody else i'm like well how could i have done that differently how yeah. could i have mm -hmm. done that? like i dive into myself internally too often and sometimes mm -hmm. it's like no hold on you didn't do anything wrong you couldn't have done anything differently you did exactly right. what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. so staying out of my own way has been the biggest challenge or the thing that i've had to change um over time is just making sure i, I am my instead of my biggest critic i'm my biggest supporter yes so, yeah having to change the narrative with that and you know i say all the time that your mind is so powerful. Like it what is. you feed yourself and what you tell yourself, which is, a, is this is aligned with what I posted on my story today. Like mm -hmm. instead of saying like, I have to go to work, I have to do an interview, I have to do all these things. Cause I'm complaining. Mm -hmm. complaining. I'm just putting negative energy mm -hmm. out there and that's going to come back to me. So I'm like, no, I am going to, I know I have a laundry list of stuff to do, but you know what? I get to do this. I'm honored yeah. to do this. I have the opportunity to do this. I'm blessed to do this. Like mm -hmm. just small changes like that is something that I'm working on now because sometimes you could just find yourself just having a bad day, being tired. And yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. you just start saying negative things. And it's mm -hmm. just like, ugh, this is nasty. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you do. You get you get stuck in that funk and that rut. And yes. it's just like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to take everything and throw it away. Like, yeah. <laughs> Every you know, it's real, girl. Well, that is real. Yeah. I don't, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to do anything. So yeah, yeah. Wow, that's definitely yeah. something I've had to to change. So, what does life look like for you now? Um, just in your day to day, I want to say like I I really want to know like what your morning routine is like, your night routine. Okay. I feel like those two are so important to me, uh, <laughs> and it was no. other people too, but. Just to know, like, with people like, you know, to me, I think you're successful, a successful woman, you know. Um, you. And I know that you're still working towards it, yes. but you're someone that I can look up to and respect and learn from and all of that. So um, I feel like the morning and the night routine is huge when it comes to really being who you want to be. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So how does your life and your routine look like now for you? So being 100% transparent, um, yeah. let's just say on on a good week, we'll just yeah. do it by week, on a good, good week, 
I would get up in the morning. I would stretch, do some like yoga mm. stretches for like five, 10 minutes before I do anything. Like first thing I do when I get out the bed and then I will journal. Um, yes, you know, really. just kind of write, set my intentions for the day. Like write, like what's on my heart? What's mm. on my mind? Mm -hmm. That all, oh, away because you know we tend to have negative thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. sometimes so just r cleansing myself of that getting rid of mm -hmm. that before I start my day and then go diving into my planner I work from home so I do oh, have okay. a full time job I'm a uh, talent acquisition project coordinator oh, cool. for a tech company mm -hmm. and so I work from home which that is has been a blessing I'm Yes. I just started working there like two and a half, almost three months ago. So, oh, congrats. Yeah. So I love it. That has been a blessing so far. So I hop online. I do work. Um, and then I might bounce between like the desk, the kitchen, or mm -hmm. kind of navigate through the house. Um, but that's pretty much my morning routine on a good week. On <laughs> um, a lazy, bad week, I'm not even going to say bad week, but just the week that yeah, you know, chill I'm week. sleeping in a little later <laughs> yeah. than I should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the yoga stretching doesn't happen. I do mm -hmm. kind of just roll out the bed, just start getting ready, got to hurry up. Sometimes I just mm -hmm. jump into the day. Like, mm -hmm. I have my planner. I live by my planner, and mm -hmm. I'll just jump into the day. And that's not good, but, you know, some days I'm more intentional. Yeah. Like, focusing on me before I start focusing on mm -hmm. everyone else it makes it better that way yes. when you do that I find that too like if I'm gonna wake up I find myself like going to the kitchen to make my daughter something to eat real quick yep. I'm like no you're not about to do that right now you're about to go sit in the living room put some mm -hmm. music on and stretch first yep yeah. then after you take care of you then you can get up and do whatever you need to do because I feel like I need that time after I wake up yeah. To just, especially now when like school started here on Tuesday. Oh yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you know, you I'm doing drop off, here. pick up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to. It's nice to have that time, that quiet time by yourself to do that. Then you start your day instead yeah. of rushing, right? Like rushing all the time. But yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Some weeks I'm rushing to get out the bed. Mm -hmm. um, some I used to like take morning walks, get up early and just walk around the block. And that was great. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I want to I want to slowly start getting back to that. Like I said, it's like it could I take it day by day. Sometimes. Yeah, I take it day by day to, for real. Try mm -hmm. not to beat myself up about it, you know, um, that. Yeah. And, and I, I implement some form of self-care every day. So in okay. the evening or my night routine, I go to the gym, yeah. try to go for the most part, like four or five days a week. Sometimes that doesn't mm -hmm. happen either. Sometimes it's like two, three days, depends on the week. But that's like a form of self-care for me. It's, it is. It's yeah. the only place that I can go and I can't do anything in the kitchen. I can't do nothing. Mm. I can't talk about any orders. Like, I'm at the gym. Like, Good point. by myself, I don't mm -hmm. have to deal with anyone or talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I, I love working out by myself, too. Yeah. Like. Absolutely. Just my, yeah, headphones and just mm -hmm. doing my thing. You That's know, I was working out with my husband. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like I'm in the zone. Like yeah, you're it in feels the zone. So good, especially if it's a day where it's like, oh, I really was not gonna, I wasn't gonna come to the gym, and then you yeah you yeah went to the gym and you had a great workout. This is the best like, workout. <laughs> That's the best workout so that's a part of my evening routine and then um some some evenings i'll hang, hang out with my boyfriend um you know okay. we, we yeah. watch tv like we okay. like watch tv going to the movies like that's like our thing mm -hmm. so you know that's another form of like self-care for me is the opportunities that i have to spend time with the people that i love and yes. the people yeah. that you know bring me peace and the people who mm -hmm. i can just not have to worry about work or mm -hmm. feel the pressure of just everything else that I have going on. I just, that's my form of self-care. That's amazing. Um, so yeah. at night, some people, I I watch TV. Like, I watch, like, 30 minutes of, mm -hmm. you know, a little TV show. I'll try maybe read a book. But sometimes I like to do something that's mindless. Because all mm -hmm. day, mindless, yeah. I'm running. Like, I'm going mm -hmm. full force all day. Like, so mm -hmm. the, time that, the moment I step out that bed, I'm going full force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you are. No breaks. You so, have to pay attention all day. Exactly. I'm on, on working and then, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I have to do errands. I have to do this. I have to do that. And so I'm, 
I can't. I don't even watch TV during the day because it'll slow me down. No, all yeah, day I, I listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. I talk on the phone a little bit, mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> you know, I'm listening to um, ebook or um, audibles. Mm -hmm. So that's my day. So at night, sometimes I just want to watch a trashy TV show, mm -hmm. and I just want to kick my feet up and scroll on TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> like yep. that is my step. That's my routine. <laughs> like I love I, that routine. <laughs> if I can watch TikTok. TikToks before I go to sleep, I'm good. Yeah, that's your wind down time. Yes, absolutely. You, know? you have to have a wind down time. If you didn't have that and you just have to straight go to sleep, you would be even more miserable. Probably. Absolutely. Yeah, you didn't have that I don't time, have so. to. I'm like, yeah, oh, watch TikTok or watch TikTok. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> like, this, I've been looking forward to this all day. And mm -hmm. I'm really big on like um, rewarding yourself. So if I, I tell myself when I wake up in the morning, like, if you go full throttle, Girl, you get to go to In and Out. Like, mm. if, you go, if you go hard today, you mm. get to do this. Like, I yeah. make sure I try to treat myself so that way it's somewhat of like a okay. I I went all day focused. Mm -hmm. I got a lot done on my to do list. I get to treat myself, and it's just refreshing because that's like an award system that I apply it is. for my yeah. personal life. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. it's kind of like with your children. You, you do your homework. You good in school. Yep. Then we're gonna take you get some ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's what I do in my personal life because I don't feel like, oh, I should just go to the mall and go shopping or let me mm -hmm. go online and just mm -hmm. buy something on Amazon I know I don't need. But why mm -hmm. am I doing that? Right. And right. so it's like, you know, you worked hard this week or you worked really hard mm -hmm. today, you deserve it. Yeah, it helps you have control over your money, your you know, your spending mm -hmm. and your wants and your needs. Like, I don't need that. I said to myself, yep. if I do this, I'm gonna get this because I don't get it yep. all the time. And it's yeah. a motivator, you know. It's like, a motivator. You know mm -hmm. what? I I'm gonna I'm a, I'm gonna check myself, you know, and I'm gonna treat myself when I deserve to be treated. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes, when you deserve to be treated. That yeah. that's my sister. She's a yes, love that. Reward yourself. We're always um, rewarding everyone else. That's part yes, of yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we yeah we're always rewarding everyone else. Like yeah. I I need to be I rewarded. Can't see the comments. I hate that I can't. Oh, see you them. you didn't. There's some oh, comments there. Oh, I don't. I can't see anything. It's okay. Okay, all oh, that stinks. <laughs> I know, but uh, and I hate that it like takes it away too. Yeah, I don't know why. Why does it do that? I don't that? know why it does that. <laughs> Not to hit up Instagram. <laughs> yeah, they were, let me know if they respond because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never. I'm like I'm curious as to why that is because you're losing that engagement from exactly. the from, from, from like from everybody else that tunes in later can that kind of see. In. Yep, they can't even see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like nothing happens, you know, right. in the video. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, so you said you have a boyfriend. So how do you balance your relationship and your work and all of that? Uh so a big ooh, because at the beginning it was a little rough because yeah. I was doing like five, six cakes a week. Um, I wasn't working from home, so I was commuting like an like yeah, about an hour away from home. Um, Whoa, there yeah. and back. So by the time I came home, I'm like, oh, it's cake time. Focused on cake mm -hmm. and no time for him. So it was like, it was tough because I didn't know like how to really juggle it at that point. It would be like, okay, like I'll make time for you on like Sunday. But it was like, dang. So like all these other, <laughs> other days, he's like, so I don't get no love. Like I don't get right. nothing. Like, so I, you know, I also at that time was just burnt out. So yeah, that's really when I decided, like, I'm not taking all those orders. Like, that's what really motivated me to just be like, you know what, two to three orders max a week, because yeah. I'm in the office at work, like this is pre COVID. So this is like mm. two and a half years ago. So this is when life was like normal, normal. Like there was mm -hmm. no work from home option at all. So then it was like, yeah, I can't do this. Like I'm staying up till 1 a.m., getting up at 6 a.m. to get on the train, bus. Oh, work, no. Yeah. And then come home. I'm I'm beat. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Yeah, it's a long and day. so it just, it, could, it didn't work. So I cut orders down um, to like max. Now it's like max to two orders a week so yeah, that gives good. me like Friday my Friday nights don't mm -hmm. look like what my Friday nights used to look like like no more to staying up till 2 a.m yeah, no, no more like 
waking up on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. to finish the cake by 9 a.m. There's none of that. Like, mm -mm. I have max two orders a week, and I stand by that. That's all that I, my, me personally can balance because I do genuinely like to spend time with my loved mm -hmm. ones. So it was like, yeah. no, I don't, I don't want to spend Thanksgiving or Christmas or these holidays working and i don't want like no. to go somewhere on friday night i want to go somewhere on friday night i don't mm -hmm. have no kids like i'm right I'm girl right. get it in while you can girl. right <laughs> so like, i need to enjoy this and yeah you know not to say that i don't enjoy my business but i also found i did i have done some of my best work having two cakes a week like no oh, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like work good point like, I can mm -hmm. take my time. I can change things up. I'm mm -hmm. waking up. I can make content. I yep. can you have time. I don't have to rush downstairs. I used to have clients like waiting for me because I'm literally adding last minute details yeah. on because I slept too long. So stressful. Like, <laughs> it wasn't worth it. It was mm -hmm. like, and then I'm looking at the money that I make and I'm like, okay, once I pay all the expenses, supplies, mm -hmm. and ingredients, it was all that stress worth it. Like, now I'm sleeping mm -hmm. all day on Saturday, so I don't wow, do nothing yeah. Friday night, because now on Saturday, I have to catch up on sleep, so now I can't do anything with my boyfriend because I'm tired, mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm just no good, and then I'm, like, good on Sunday while everybody's getting ready for, you know, the, the week. For the week, yeah. So you have, like, really no day to, like, just no day. you. No day. thinking about anything. Mm-hmm. So I had to start setting those boundaries for myself. And once I stopped feeling bad about mm -hmm. setting those boundaries, that was when everything changed for me mentally and just for my business. So I'm big on quality over quantity. I don't need mm -hmm. to be booked and busy. I no, know. Right. I love that too. Qu quality over quantity. It's not about... It's not about... I don't know why people think it's a race. I have to make 100 cakes this week or... You know what I mean? Like... It's not about that. We want to see yeah. like good work, and you want you want your customers to be happy if you're selling yep. cakes and stuff. If you're doing all that, you need you have to be doing good work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because your 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 life depends on it. Like your yeah. business depends on it. You know. And most so, of my clients are returning clients. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, to me that says like I did. Excuse me, I did a great job on your order the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and you're mm -hmm. going to continue to come back to me because you, it's a consistent quality. It's a consistent quality, You don't yeah. have to worry about, you know, oh, well, she, I saw she posted she has five cakes. I wonder if she's going to mess up on my cake this time. No, yeah. because you know yeah. that I'm consistent. You trust my word mm -hmm. and you know my track record. So if mm -hmm. I do create some work that's like, yeah, this is not you, then you know there has to be something really going on because that's not that's not how I move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I struggled. I've talked to you about it, you know, mm -hmm. you're struggling with selling cakes and everything and just the anxiety and the pressure, you know, and then I put my husband under that pressure because he's trying to figure it out, trying to help me out, you know, because I'm like telling him like, bah, 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 like whatever yeah. my frustration is, you know, and he's like, baby, I don't, maybe... <laughs> Yes. Maybe you should do like one cake or, you know, yep. one cake a month or something just so that way you can be, because it's a lot. You have to plan. You have to, you know, put all the decorations together. You have to do that ahead of time. Like yep. all these little pieces take a couple hours a day every day to get to that, to get to the end result of the cake, you know? Yep. So, um, so that's why I was like, uh-uh, like. I don't like how I feel when I'm doing these orders. Yeah. I don't feel creative and artistic. I just feel yeah. like I'm being rushed to finish something. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I used to be irritated. Like, I'm like, why yeah. am I? I don't have to do this. Why mm -hmm. am I irritated right now? Like, now, if I am right. like, annoyed, <laughs> it's probably because I'm tired or I just mm -hmm. need to take a nap and just come back to the cake. But it's never like, I'm like, ugh. Like, I'm so annoyed with this order. I'm yeah. so annoyed that I have to do this because... Your attitude is going to be reflected in your work. Like it, it is going yeah. to show, and it will mm -hmm. be obvious to your clients. Like, yeah, nah, that's not what we saw on your Instagram. So, what happened? You had a bad week. That's unacceptable. To mm -hmm. me. Like, mm -hmm. I can't. I would never want to do business. You don't go get your hair done, and the hairstylist is having a bad week. And yeah, yeah. They're like, I'm sorry. I just, I just, I'm having a bad week. I'm, I'm dyed your hair green, mm -hmm. and I'm dyed it blonde. Like. Mm -hmm. That would be good point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can't treat someone's two hundred, three hundred dollar cake 
that way. Just because mm -mm. you're irritated, go take a nap, go take a walk, and figure it out and get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> do what they're paying you to do, mm -hmm. you know? And this is more than just the money. It's your name. Your it's your name, right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. At the end of the day. Yeah, if, 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 even if you undercharge or mm -hmm. charge correctly or whatever, it's still your name. Right. Them. So, yeah, very good point. I, li I like that point. So what is your biggest, your biggest challenge today? And then um, we'll start closing out. My biggest challenge. Um, oof. I'm trying to think because I, I have a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and crazy um, about cake said good good evening, y'all. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish I could see y'all comments, but yeah, she can't see your comments. Commenting. I love you guys. Um, so what is my one of my biggest challenges? Um, right now I'm I would say patience. I mm. would say patience because okay, two, two, and I'll make it quick. So first challenge is patience. Second challenge is I want to do everything, like mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. Like you're, you're open-minded. <laughs> I want to do it all. Like when I, I can't. It's so frustrating sometimes. Like normal people can just look at. I'm not gonna say normal, but yeah, I'm gonna say normal because yeah, I'm just say normal. Odd. I'm gonna so say know. I'm a little odd with this. So mm -hmm. normal people don't wake up with business ideas and things yeah. that they can make income or generate this or create this and all this mm. and I do sometimes mm -hmm. my the challenge is my brain does not turn off like yeah. I can't shut it off I want to have my hands in a little bit of everything because I want to see what sticks it's kind of like mm -hmm. it was like I was doing so many things and I tried so many things and then this stuck I'm like oh I know I could do this yeah. with something mm -hmm. else you know that's uh, that's completely unrelated because I I'm a firm believer that your your purpose and your passions change and as do. You, you go into different stages of your mm -hmm. life like those things change so i think i'm in that stage of like i still feel like extreme fulfillment from creating cakes um but now i'm mm -hmm. starting to transition into feeling that same fulfillment with helping other bakers in the community or mm -hmm. answering questions or being that resource and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this feeling that I get, too. So I like those I, feelings, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. OK. Like, so I've been trying to transfer over into that area of positioning myself as more of a, of a resource on the business side. Because, yeah, you could DM me, ask me questions about cakes and all that stuff. But I'm like, oh, I actually do know a lot about the business. Like, you know, yeah, I, I do. know a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I look at that and I wake up with a different idea every day. It's like, I wow. cannot turn it off. So write them down. I know. Sometimes I, I have a notepad of just like an idea or I'll text it to myself so mm -hmm. that I will not forget it. And um, the other challenge is patience because I'm like, can you just hurry up and hit? Can something yeah, right? just hurry up? <laughs> hurry up and hit like what's what's what are we waiting for mm -hmm. like but I have to slow myself down I have to really think back to I have been doing cakes for seven years like wow, yeah how can I just expect something to just throw it throw something at the wall and it's just gonna stick just, yeah yeah mm -hmm. um, like I have to really be patient with that so you know if something's not working okay cool let's pivot let's try to do it yes this. You know, mm -hmm. let's build it out this way. Let's go down the street and make a U-turn. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, so I have to have these conversations with mm -hmm. myself because I am not patient in the sense of like, come on, like, mm -hmm. come on, like, let's get there. And I need to, that's, that's something that I've been dealing with. I, I really need to just take a time, take the time to breathe and just mm -hmm. like really smell the roses and just bask yeah. in the the season that I'm in right now. Right. The season we're in, yeah. The seeds that you plant today, they mm. they are not they do not bloom today. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to give them a chance. And that's deep. Yeah. That, yeah, I that's what I struggle with the most. That's one of my biggest challenges. Okay. Wow. So we have Sweets Twenty Four real quick. I'm not uh -huh. Sweets Twenty Four Cake Shop said I'm liking this live. 
And then earlier, my sister said, it's about the boundaries for me. Boundaries will change your life. Absolutely. Yes, they will. You have yes. to have boundaries. You it's have just, to have boundaries. You're not going to be able to do anything without. No. Like, you're going to be like laid out if you don't have boundaries. I, and overworked <laughs> and overwhelmed. And um, Domo Snappy said, right, it's so organic. And my sister said, yes, this episode is fluid. <laughs> Thank you. And God. then Ashy, Ashy E? Yeah, Ashy Ash. <laughs> oh, Ashy Ash. She said, that was perfect, Tay. <laughs> That's my best. So we got people really <laughs> feeling our conversation. Yeah. I love that. I'm excited about that. Because I wanted I'm it excited. to be like a girl talk, but like. Yeah still like serious but like yep. funny but like like all the emotions you know what i mean yes. like this is like everything yes <laughs> but um okay so now um so you kind of talked about how you're serving others right now with mm -hmm. your um you know with your helping other business owner cake business owners maybe other people too if they want because mm -hmm. really running a business is kind of all the same it's just this it's yep. just a different any niches -based business. Yep. yeah any service-based business yeah and um, so, yeah, so what are you working on now? What is your current offer? If you, ha I know that you have many, so you can just talk about all the many things. offers. <laughs> um, my current offer, what I'm really working on now is, like I mentioned earlier, is just positioning myself more as a business resource. Um, mm -hmm. So I have just mm -hmm. launched, or fairly recently launched, my cake coaching sessions, and mm -hmm. those sessions really are it's a combination of like two coaching sessions in one so you have like an hour with me via facetime zoom whatever you okay. prefer and during that session if you have a cake that you're like hey i don't even know where to start with with this cake like mm -hmm. please give me some guidance tell me where to get these supplies like i don't need you to show me how to do it i just need your expert guidance mm -hmm. and i just need you to tell me like how i should structure this that That's is good. one part of the session. And I mm -hmm. really wanted to create that because when I was coming up, I was the person that was like, I do not, I really want to ask her how she did that, but I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. She might not respond. And then I'm not going to like her because I'm going to mm -hmm. be a mean girl. Right. <laughs> so then I'm like, let me not ask. I'm going to just figure it out. And I spent so much time trying to figure things out that weren't mm -hmm. obvious or there was no resources out there. So I, you know, had one baker breeze cakes and I would like DM her like, hey, do you know how I could do this with this cake? And she would respond. But mm -hmm. it, it wasn't really in detail, which, of course, I understand. She was super busy. So it was like, yeah, she didn't yeah. just stop what she was doing and break it down to me. But I'm like, okay, she gave me something. I'm going to run with this. But I was like, you know, we really need, and new bakers really need someone to be able to come to and say, like, hey, I need an hour of your time mm -hmm. to figure out how do I do this. And I will literally break everything down. I'll send you an email with the overview of like this is what mm -hmm. we talked about here's mm -hmm. everything you need here are the links and everything in this email and i have found that mm -hmm. that has allowed me to create like great relationships with other mm -hmm. makers i'm following up with them seeing them grow like hearing like we just kind of just start talking about personal life too yeah like, you yeah. know we end up actually becoming friends Mm -hmm. um, and then the second half of that is like a business consultation so if you are like hey can you look at my website can you look at my instagram page Ooh, okay. sure i'm gonna look at your website your instagram page while we're on the phone and tell you exactly what i think you need to change provide you with the resources that i use just pretty much pouring mm -hmm. my knowledge into you mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you don't have to you, it can decrease and shorten that learning curve because yeah that's what i've been in the business for seven years so there's a lot of money i've wasted there's a lot of time i've wasted I've learned great, Same. valuable lessons, mm -hmm. but had I had the, the opportunity to pick other people's brain, then mm -hmm. I would have probably been there a little faster, you know? Oh, I yeah. learned those mm -hmm. lessons a little sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everything takes so much research. And I and I do notice that, what I, to me, like, the number one question in Facebook groups and, like, the cake decorating mm -hmm. groups is how do i make this like yes. the design how do i make this ruffle how do i make this mm -hmm. thing on this cake or this random thing and you're looking at the cake it could be made so many different ways you know what yeah. i mean and people Everybody kind of get their technique too yeah exactly mm -hmm. so i love that you offer that because it just takes that stress out because yeah. there's a lot of research that goes into 
um, the design of the cake, like yep. the color. Like I had to do my one friend, she got fuchsia, right? I'm like, how do I make fuchsia? There's, if you look oh, at fuchsia, there's yeah. 10 different, like not 10, but there's like a million different shades of different fuchsia. Different shades, yep. Right, so I'm here coloring fondant, trying to figure out. I said, you know what? From now on, I'm only doing the primary colors. <laughs> yeah, yes. you're only gonna get right. red, you know, blue, green, <laughs> like yes. any special color. I'm not, I'm not doing it because again, you get frustrated. You're, and I'm asking my my husband and my daughter, like, is this fuchsia? Is this fuchsia? Like, I think you know. So. <laughs> and I thought I'm comparing it to the phone, and yep. you know, just like those things. Like I don't like mixing colors and stuff. Yeah, and all of that. Like it's just an extra task like extra yeah. thing like you know but it's it is needed right because people Absolutely. want what they want because it's you know whatever that they order so you do it for them and just figuring that out makes it so much faster when you have someone like you to help them yeah with that and i think and i also wanted to make it really affordable it's only it's 50 dollars yeah. for an nice. hour yeah and, but i don't you know like of course it's like oh no get your money get your money but I didn't really want to do like, oh, do a hundred dollars or something like that. Cause I wanted it to be something that you can invest in that mm -hmm. something you can justify. Like something yeah, you can do yeah. like, mm -hmm. okay, $50. All right. I'll just save this up with a couple of cakes or something like that. I didn't mm -hmm. want it to be something that would break your pockets when this is something that's actually very fulfilling for me. Like is, every yeah. time I get off of a call, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, like, I know so much more than I give mm -hmm. my, myself credit for. You do, you do. And I was like, I need these type of interactions to continue to affirm me mm -hmm. and and let me know, like, no, you are who you think you are. It's okay mm -hmm. to operate in that space and mm -hmm. to help other people. So for me, I'm really that that co those coaching sessions are really like for me to also feel fulfilled, but while supporting mm -hmm. and helping other bakers who mm -hmm. need the guidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. We all, we all, we all need guidance. All yes. of us, even you, you even have someone Absolutely. that helps you. Mentor, you know, make yes, sure. Ronnie Brown. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was yeah. My mm -hmm. business mentor. And I definitely wow. paid a pretty penny to get access to her, but you know, her brand rehab changed my, it changed Changed my business, but it changed my life. And so you so, took her, okay? Because I, I yes. recently found her, and I've heard, I, I hear her name everywhere, like here everywhere. and there, here yes. and there. Yes. And I watch her stuff, and she is on. She's that point. girl. I love her. I love listening to her because yes. she says it like it is. She don't care. She does not. Nobody, care. Yeah, and she knows. She, she knows, knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yes, and so that's why you know I, I'm a firm believer in you have to invest in other people in the knowledge that other people have sometimes mm -hmm. everything's not on youtube sometimes no it's not you need other people's mm -hmm. knowledge and mm -hmm. intellectual property to really help intellectual property that yeah. next mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. you know like because a lot of people and i'm guilty of this i will buy the same class from different people they are saying the same thing but that one person says it in a certain mm -hmm. way that's just like oh wow that's I, all I got it. Yeah. This whole time? <laughs> mm -hmm. What? So, yeah, I that's why I forever am, am indebted to her. You know, she just changed the out, my outlook on business, my outlook on who I am as a woman, on what my business hey, looks like. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's deeper than a rebrand. Yeah, it sound, the way that she talks about it and everything and the way that I've seen, like, your stuff since, you, mm -hmm. since you've changed, you know, it's, you can tell you really worked hard. You really listened to her yes. and, and take her advice and all of that. So that is amazing. Like, you got, you got your money's worth and you got a yes. lifetime mentor, Absolutely. you know, that you can have forever and ask questions and whatever. Yep. So that's, that's amazing. So it's a great investment. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Highly recommend. All right. Yeah, so, um, all right, so I'm going to ask you if you could have any kind of cake made for you, or if you can make any cake, what cake would you do? What cake would you make? Any design, I'm, anything? I'm not a cake person. You're not? Okay. <laughs> I love I'm peach honest. cobbler. So okay, that's good. Anything peach cobbler, give me some vanilla bean ice cream, vanilla bean. and I'm good. Like, I'm not even a birthday cake person. Like, you don't have to buy me a birthday cake for my birthday. Okay. Like, you can give me a bowl of peach powder and put a candle in it. Like, Aww. that's me. Like, mm -hmm. I've never been big on cakes. 
why do I make cakes? I don't know. But you know, because I, it's stuck. I, I've been right. I've yeah. never been big on sweets in general. So yeah. peach cobbler though has always been my thing. So, yeah, yeah, yes. That's, okay, awesome. That's what I so want. Peach cobbler. Everybody get her peach cobbler Give me for some her peach birthday cobbler on May eighth. Okay, on May eighth. Yes. <laughs> And all right, so where can we find you? I know you got your YouTube Yay. and and your podcast. So yeah, let us know where we can find you. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, the K Canvas Studio. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Apple Podcasts, TikTok, all the K Canvas Studio, Facebook, okay. K Canvas mm -hmm. Studio. Um, you can email me. If you have any questions, any yes. you know, inquiries at booking at the Um, Where else can you find me? You can text me 323-553-5172 or just click um, click on my, go to my page and then it'll say contact and then you could text me there. So yeah, awesome. you can you find all the me. info. You can find me. Yeah, you can find her. There, there's no excuse. <laughs> there's no excuse. You can find me. <laughs> yes. And is there any question that I should have asked you? <sighs> or maybe that I should ask in future podcasts. Mm, I don't think. Uh, um, maybe like you should ask like if there's a piece of advice that yeah someone has um for the audience my piece of advice yeah. would be to understand that you have to be consistent consistency 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 if you've listened to this whole live you have heard that i have bounced around and i've done a few different mm -hmm. things however i have been consistent and mm -hmm. that is why baking is what stuck because I was consistent and I didn't depend on motivation. I didn't depend mm. on being motivated every day to get up, to bake, to do, you know, invest in my yeah, craft, invest in my business. I just stayed consistent. And mm -hmm. that is why I mentioned earlier, my non-negotiable is my goals because mm -hmm. I'm not motivated. <laughs> like trust me some days yeah like, i'm not i'm not either sometimes i want to get in the bed i don't want to yeah. bother like i don't want to post on instagram like i'm i should have posted earlier today so when we get off of here i gotta get my post together to post you know yeah, yeah. i'm not motivated to do that being honest but i'm consistent mm -hmm. so as often as i can i'm going to make sure that i'm pouring into myself i'm pouring into my business because that's the only time you'll see results just like with fitness and i know you can relate to this is yeah. fitness is not you don't just go to the gym for 30 days and say oh, okay i lost 20 pounds you don't do that. Mm -mm. That's not even, that's not consistent. It shouldn't enough. be that way anyway. It shouldn't yeah. be that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to start implementing consistency and creating it and, and making it a part of your lifestyle. Yes. Once being yeah. consistent becomes a part of your lifestyle, you can do anything because nothing is off the table for you because you know and you've proven to yourself that even on the your, your saddest days, your worst days, your lonely mm -hmm. days, you're going to get up and you're going to do that thing whatever mm -hmm. that is for you you're going to work towards it so that is my piece of advice i love that you said um you don't like you don't have to be motivated and i will base my day on my motivation and mm -hmm. not, on, not on consistency mm -hmm. like i say i'm not i'm not i'm not motivated i'm not motivated mm -hmm. you know but it's not about the motivation right you just changed my life with that like yes <laughs> i'm serious Cause I you know, too, because I don't have to be, I don't be motivated half the time to get out the bed. Yeah. Like, but, I feel like people are, are, are motivated, but they're not. They're just doing it. It's not a big deal. Just go do right. it. Just go right. be consistent and do your, and do your tasks. It's, you know what I mean? And when, when you live and breathe your goals, like, when you know, like, like I have a burning desire to be successful in mm -hmm. what success means for me. So I know that if I take too many days away from doing what mm -hmm. I gotta do to get to that goal, I'm gonna look, I could look up in five years and be like, damn, those three days that I sat in the bed, not doing nothing, scrolling on Instagram could have been three days that I could have gotten to my goal. Mm -hmm. Like that's how my brain It works. is, that's true. That's one hundred percent. We don't have time to waste. So mm -hmm. if I if the minimum I can spend on this task or this goal is fifteen minutes, 
I'm 15 minutes closer to success. I'm 15 minutes no. closer to completing this. Like, mm -hmm. it, everything is so digestible and everyone gets so overwhelmed with, oh, well, oh, I just don't know how I'm going to do this. Or it's such a huge task. Take that big, mm -hmm. large task, break it down into 10 separate tasks. And mm -hmm. only look at the first task at each day. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of times it mm -hmm. takes me so long to launch things or get things out because I'm one person for one. For two, I take one project, like intentional conversations wasn't just like, oh, I am created this over the weekend. Like yeah, no, I had an yeah. idea, mm -hmm. we got it out, boom. Like I did work with somebody. I worked with a good friend of mine who helped me like yeah. take my my ideas out my brain but we mm -hmm. worked on one thing every day every day worked on one thing like that's how you avoid being overwhelmed that's just mm -hmm. how i operate my life like i hate feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. yeah but i know mm -hmm. if i don't work towards that and i'm slacking or i'm like oh, that's just too much then i'm gonna look up in two weeks and be like dang you should have just started because so and so just launched exactly what you trying to launch yo that happened to me yesterday <laughs> That happens to me yesterday or, or, or the other day. I'm like, I I'm, I'm want to launch something and, I, and it's like ready to go. But I'm, you know, but then some other person like basically launched the same thing hey. last week, you know, but I can still well, do what I do. You still got to do it. No, yeah. So, you still do yeah. it because can't nobody do it like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I, I totally feel that. And good tips too. Yeah, of course. Um, let me see. Crazy About Cake said, when does Tay squeeze in her workouts? Every day, girl. Like, I would be at, I'm going to the gym in, like, I'll be at the gym in, like, 30 minutes as soon as we get off this call. Okay, okay. And Shy Diva, she's agreeing with everything. And then she said, consistency is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And then Ash Ash mm -hmm. said, um, talk about it, Taylor. <laughs> And Shadi was like, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, we'll close this out. Thank you so much. Of course. And, Thank you for having me. Um, somebody said how, Shadi was said how long. How long what? Not, I don't oh, know how long do I work out? Probably. Okay. Um, I work out for a minimum hour. Yeah. I do hour, hour and a half. Yeah. With my, you know. Um, I usually do about an hour. Yeah. Depends on, depends on what I'm doing, of course. But yeah. Because some I workouts mean, are quicker. Some yeah. body parts are a little quicker than others. Right. Yeah, I could do arms, you know, arms, I could knock it out, but them legs, oof. I yeah, that, that takes a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for watching. Comments, thank you. Liking, everything. My sister just texted me saying that I did great tonight. Well, Aww. we did great. You did yeah. great. I hope I did great for you. You did. Yes, <laughs> I loved it. My first, this, I believe this is my first my first live interview yeah oh my gosh yeah wow. so we're like first like we're like yes both first yep I interviewed each other yes. this is my this first is amazing one. super 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 cool i love doing this i love talking about yes. this and just like saying how i feel and i love that you like say how you feel as well yeah and um so this will be on youtube the this whole live will be on youtube at heaven my cake on youtube mm -hmm. and then i'll save it to this um to instagram and if you like cake decorating, I'm at Heaven My Cake on Instagram. I have it linked in my bio and all of that. Um, and then you can listen on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I have. And I have can it you on. tag me? Tag me when you share this so that it'll go to my page as well. Okay, is that how you do it? Because I, I needed. Can, you could tag me in the caption too, or mention me in the caption. But if you click on the tag people, tag me, and then okay. it'll show on my page. Okay, cool. I'll do yeah. that. Um, Ash said that y'all did great. Thank you so thank much. You, Ash. Thank you. And Taylor, thank you so much. I had so much fun speaking with you. It was awesome. <laughs> Have a good night. You thank too. You Have guys. a good workout. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. -bye. Bye.